Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connections Standalone. RAM Connections Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections. It can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this particular video, we are going to look at incorporating seismic provisions for a beam to column flange moment frame within RAM connection standalone. This will include the process for specifying your seismic provisions criteria, generating your additional seismic load combinations, specifying your joint data to include a reduced beam section, and then finally assigning your connection design. Now within RAM connection standalone, we have three different types of connections that are available for beam to column moment frames to assist with seismic provisions. These would include your moment end plate, a directly welded connection, and also a flange plated connection. We will now turn our attention to our sample model in RAM connection standalone. And as you can see, we've already created a beam to column flange joint within this model that has both a shear and a moment reaction assigned to it. Now, over the course of this video, we're going to be discussing the full workflow for incorporating seismic provisions. And the first step in our workflow is to specify our design configuration. To start that process, you can select the design tab of the ribbon toolbar and then click on the design code icon. Here, we're going to select our design code and our maximum strength ratio limit. In addition to that, we're also going to tell the program that we want to consider our seismic provisions, and we're gonna select a seismic design category for your structure. When you're done with that, go ahead and click OK. Your model's now prepared for incorporating seismic provisions. So the next step in our workflow is to ensure that the load combinations have been generated to include the additional seismic load combinations that will include the amplified seismic factored loads. To start that process, let's go to the home tab of the ribbon toolbar and let's take a look at the load combinations we already have in this particular model. Now here we can see that we've created our load cases for dead load, live load, and seismic, but we don't actually have any load combinations yet. So for a model with seismic provisions, you're going to generate two sets of load combinations. Your traditional design load combinations, and then also your amplified seismic load combinations. And we have load combination generators for both of those options available in RAM Connection Standalone. So to start that process, let's click on the Home tab in the ribbon toolbar, and then click on the Generate icon. I'm going to generate my typical design load combinations first. Now, as you may recall, in my design criteria, I did specify that I will be using the AISC 360.16 code for LRFD. So I'm going to ensure that I've selected an LRFD factored load combination generator. Once I've selected the generator I'm looking for, I can click on the generate icon and then go ahead and click OK. I'm going to repeat this process now using the same tool and this time I'm going to select the AISC 34105 LRFD amplified seismic factored combinations. Now for a preview of what's going to be generated through this load combination generator, I'll be able to see those typical equations in this window. Here I can see that by default, the overstrength factor is set to 3.0 in RAM connection standalone. Now once we're done reviewing our load combinations, go ahead and click generate and then confirm the assignment and click OK. Now, as always, you're also able to create load combinations manually. So if those load combination generators don't work for you, or if you'd like to modify them, you can go to the Add and Edit Load Combinations area and you can review this information and make changes if you needed to. Now that I've specified my design code and generated my load combinations, I also want to incorporate a reduced beam section into my model and to specify my seismic load resisting system. Now, both those options are incorporated through the joint data in RAM connection standalone. So I've already started this joint 
And so I'm going to select it in the Joint Selection area, go to the Home tab of the Ribbon Toolbar, and click on the Edit icon. Now it is necessary to tell the program that you are interested in seismic provisions before trying to incorporate your seismic provisions into your joint data, as those fields will not be available until you specify seismic provisions. So and since I told the program I'm working on seismic provisions, I have a field here for seismic load resisting system. And you can see for moment frames, we can select an ordinary moment frame, an intermediate moment frame, and also a special moment frame. I'm going to go ahead and select a special seismic moment frame. And then with that, I can enter some seismic design parameters. So I can tell the program whether or not I have a reduced beam section, and then I can enter this data. I can enter the horizontal distance, the length of my reduced beam section, my reduced beam section cut maximum depth, and the shear due to gravity loads, and the maximum shear at the column face. As you select each of these parameters, you're going to notice that the help window will be available to give you some additional information regarding each of those parameters. I'm going to keep all of the default seismic design criteria and, of course, just confirm that the reduced beam section parameter is turned to yes. Once we're done, we can go ahead and click OK. Now, we are ready to assign a moment connection to this particular joint. And I have a couple of options. I can go with a moment end plate. That is a combined connection type. I can go with a directly welded connection. That would be a moment connection type. Or I can go with a flange plate. That's a moment connection type. So if I wanted to go to the moment end plate, a combined connection, it wouldn't be necessary to assign a shear connection type also to that joint, as that connection type can handle both shear and moment reactions. If I wanted to go with a directly welded or flange plated connection, however, I would want to make sure that it, the shear reaction was resisted through a shear connection type. Now for this particular model, I'm going to be going with a directly welded connection type. Again, that's a moment connection. So I've already supplied a shear connection type to this joint. This shear connection is a single plate and it's currently passing the code check. So I'm at the point in my workflow where I'm ready to assign my directly welded connection type, and that's available through a smart connection workflow. To access that workflow, I can click on the Design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the Assign icon and navigate to the Smart Connection area. I'm looking for a smart directly welded connection type. So I'll go ahead and select that. RAM connection is reminding me that this is a moment connection. So I'll confirm that option by clicking close. Now, once a moment connection is assigned, you will be able to see that reduced beam section in your graphic in both the view window and the joint selection area. Now, in the joint selection area, what I'm going to notice is that my interaction ratio is now greater than 1.0, indicating that the moment connection did fail the code check. So let's go ahead and review the connection design and possibly make some changes if we needed to. To access the connection pad, click on the Design tab in the Ribbon Toolbar, click on the Edit icon, and then we're going to edit our moment connection. Now the first thing I like to do when I receive a failure or a warning within RAM connection is take a look at my report. So if I click on the Results icon in the Ribbon in the connection pad, I'll be able to see all the geometric considerations and design checks that were performed. Here I can see that I am getting a warning regarding the support thickness, but I'm also failing according to panel web shear and also local web yielding, which is basically governing this design. So let me go ahead and close out of the connection report. Now I have a couple of different options available to me here. Um, I could go back to my joint data and make some changes as far as uh, the reduced beam section goes, or perhaps changing my column size to get me more to a passing or acceptable connection design. The other path I have available to me is perhaps adding some reinforcement to this joint through the use of stiffeners, which is what I'm going to go with for this particular model. So I'm going to navigate down to the stiffeners area, and I can see I can add transverse stiffeners and also column web panel zone stiffeners. Let's start with transverse stiffeners. So here I can see I can add them on the top, the bottom, or both sides. 
And in the help window, I'll be able to see what each of those will yield for me. I'm going to go ahead and say apply them to both. I'm going to select full depth stiffeners and I can customize their parameters. I'm going to go with a width of six inches. I'm going to go with A36 material. And you can see I can go with either a fillet weld or a full penetration weld. I'm going to switch this to a full penetration weld. In addition to that, let's go ahead and scroll on down and we can see that we also have column web panel zone stiffeners available to us. So for this particular exercise, I'm going to select a diagonal stiffener. And then I can customize the width, the thickness. I'm going to increase this to three quarters of an inch. I can enter the clip information, also the material and the fillet information. I can also modify the weld size. Now, as we can see in this area, in the ribbon, my interaction ratio has now been updated. It is indicated in green, meaning that I've now passed the code check with the reinforcement. So as long as I like this reinforcement, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the save icon. And then also, if I take a look at the DXF view, I'll be able to see all of those different pieces of information. I can see these weld symbols have been updated as well. Now, before I leave here, let's go ahead and just click on this results area again. And here for seismic provisions, you should be able to see all of your seismic pre-qualification requirements and all the design checks and so forth that were calculated for these seismic provisions. You could see all of your code sections there as well. Now, if you want some additional information regarding these calculations for seismic provisions, click on your view formulas icon You'll be able to see all the formulas and variables that were used. And again, all of those reference code sections or design guides and so forth. Let me go ahead and close out of this report. And since I did make changes, I'm going to save this. And then I can exit out of the connection pad. As we can see, my 3D view and my joint selection area have been updated to reflect the new status of my connection design and also to visually indicate the reinforcement that I added through this process. At this point, this completes your whole workflow for incorporating seismic provisions into a moment frame joint within RAM connection standalone. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.